Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show, Matt. We have Kentucky Oaks, Kentucky Derby, champions returning. It's a huge weekend. It sure is, Brian. It's springtime, and there's big racing every weekend, and Horse Center has got it for you. Absolutely, Matt. Hey, folks, if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel, please do so now. On with the show. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It's nice and warm here. The calendar says spring is coming, and so does the weather. I'm ready for a great weekend of racing. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's not talk about the weather too much, Matt, because we have too much horse racing here to talk about. The first thing I want to go over, Matt, was that win in the San Felipe. Life is good looked very good winning the San Felipe, Matt. He was immediately bet down in the Kentucky Derby future wager that was going on this weekend, down to two to one. Pretty clear favorite over an undefeated champion. Yeah, Brian, a crazy favorite talking about that Kentucky Derby future pool, two to one. It'll probably be a bigger price than that in the Derby itself. But anyway, that's uh, that's not what's especially important. Uh, that performance uh, uh, last weekend by Life is Good got a huge buyer speed figure of 107. Um, I don't know. I can't remember uh, uh, a three-year-old having that kind of number heading into the Kentucky Derby in recent history it was visually impressive in terms of the number of lengths he won by but wow brian he was bearing out a little bit in the stretch yeah matt the 107 buyer you know buyers have gone down in recent years i remember horses of course like bellamy road even more recently Eskin Escandereya, uh, i believe had buyers bigger than that but life is good only making his third start he had that sham where he uh, he was uh, uh, losing ground at the end. The, the other horse was coming on to him, his, uh, his stable, stable mate, Medina Spirit. So this time, no worries about margin of victory. Yeah. But like you said, the undefeated son of Into Mischief was moving out the entire stretch. Uh, after the sham, I was worried about how that margin of victory was quickly dissipating. After this race, very impressive, big buyer, good time, left four talented horses behind. But you got to wonder if he's bearing out like this in a mile 16th. It raises questions when we talk about a mile and a quarter, light into mischief, as I said, is the sire, distorted humor on the other side. There are questions about 10 furlongs for me. I, I agree, Brian, Brian. There are questions about that bearing out. And, and uh, uh, we've got the replay and we've got a head-on view. Uh, fans of that race you can see actually how much he he was bearing out and as he uh, galloped out past the finish line he actually uh, continued to bear out and almost was at the outside fence and and yes you know uh, you have to wonder uh, what the cause of that is uh, was the, the distance catching up to him is he just you know a young green a three-year-old who has only made three starts. I don't know. I don't have any answers to those things, but you have to wonder, and I'm sorry, all you Life is Good fans who are gaga over that performance. Again, you're going to think, you know, Brian and I are just, you know, anti this, anti that, but, you know, that's not the case. We, we were impressed with the margin of victory and the time and the speed figure, but, you know, we're handicappers. You got to ask questions about what happened. Yeah, the way he goes to the lead is impressive. I mean, he's just got a way of running where he immediately takes over the race. And there were some other decent speed horses in here. And you could see life is good just running away from him early. It'll be interesting because I think the horse that he's, uh, he's mirroring so far in his career is, of course, Authentic, who just happened last year and won the Kentucky Derby and pushed back postponed Kentucky Derby. But he's, uh, he's on the Authentic Trail, if you will. And he was also trained by Bob Baffert. And he was also... Uh, uh, sired by into mischief so there's a lot in common there but authentic was able to relax in his biggest wins like the kentucky derby and we'll need to see if life is good can do it because so far he's just super impressive but there are questions uh raised as matt talked about with his distance uh, capabilities that he's shown in both of these stakes wins 
and we want to see more. Personally, two to one on the future wager at this point, no thanks for me. And I'm assuming you're agreeing with that, Mr. Schiffman. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, two to one, you know, and, and we've still got a couple months till the Derby itself and a 20 horse field. I can't, you know, uh, I don't know if I'd take Secretariat at two to one in the, in the future pool at this point. At this point, I would, Matt, because I know what happens in the 1973 Triple Crown. But anyway, I digress. The Kentucky Oaks, Matt, is a race we haven't talked a whole lot about yet this year, but I want to talk about it a little bit more on today's show. We have a brand new top 10, folks. I know that's fun for everybody to look at our rankings, see who we have there, talk about the horses a little bit and say, hey, where the heck is so-and-so? You guys don't even have her in the top 10. So without further ado, Matt, let's get to it. And the top two fillies on the list, I think, are fillies that are going to be on a lot of lists right now. They're both pretty lightly raced, but they've already raced against each other twice, Matt. Let's start with Clarier, who's the more recent winner. She won the Rachel Alexandra at fairgrounds over her rival travel column. It was a good race. Yeah, it certainly was an exciting race, Brian. Uh, and Clarier was the uh, less experienced of the two at that point. And, and turned the tables on travel column and then subsequently in the uh, Kentucky Oaks future wager the only one of the year that is offered by Churchill Downs happened last weekend she was bet to a very low 7-2 odds in a, in a field of uh, three-year-old fillies that really Brian I consider to be pretty wide open yeah, it's wide open, Matt. But on the other hand, I had no trouble choosing these two as my top two. And uh, I, I like number two a whole lot. So it was it, it, the hard part for me was deciding who's one, who's two. Uh, Clarier, listen, she's only run three races, but all three have been good. But if you look back at this, her second race, which was Travel Column's third race late last year in the Goldenrod at Churchill Downs, which is noteworthy as we go towards the Kentucky Oaks, Travel Column was clearly best that day because she had all sorts of trouble and she rallied by Clarier to win that golden rod. I thought Travel Column ran a very good race since Rachel Alexandra yeah. and was game to the finish. Clarier came up on her quick and then they battled it out. Clarier was best, uh, but uh, I could see Travel Column moving forward off that race for trainer Brad Cox, the da daughter of Frosted. She's only had four races. Clarier, the daughter of Curlin, trained by Steve Asmin, it's only had three. But you look at their last two races, you know, they're not against a lot of the other ones we have on the list, but very impressive, a very good top two. Speaking of impressive, Matt, we're going to jump down to number three in their list. And there we see Bob Baffert again. And this is the only Bob Baffert on the Kentucky Oaks list, unlike the Kentucky Derby uh, rankings that we'll have out next week. But beautiful gift, a daughter, Mendagliadora, hadn't raced for several months, Matt, and she closed like a shot to get up and win the Santa e Isabel last weekend. Yeah, Brian, it was a nice performance, especially as you noted, it came after uh, after a long layoff, uh, a daughter of Medaglia Doro. Um, it, it, is, it is worth noting that this was a field of four uh, out in California, so uh, we should keep that in mind. But yes, it was a nice closing move to get up and win just at the wire by a head or a neck. Yeah, yeah, she certainly looked beat at the 16th ball, and she really turned it on late. Third lifetime race coming off a maiden win about four months earlier, so beautiful gift. Rocketed it up our rankings, and she's definitely one to watch off this list, Matt. I will temper the, uh, uh, the, the negativity on the four-horse field because I think the two horses she beat are very nice horses. In fact, Mraz didn't make this list, but I think she is a dark horse. Uh, for the Kentucky Oaks, and she's the horse that got nailed on the wire, a daughter empire maker. And Calypso, who is third, is, is a very experienced, nice stakes horse. Maybe she doesn't want nine furlongs, but beautiful gift beat good horses in that Santa Isabel. We're not so sure about who's Will Secrets beating yet down in uh, Arkansas, Matt, but the Dallas Stewart trained daughter of Will Take Charge is getting better by the start. She's now won three in a row, and she's now won two stakes in a row at Oakland Park including what I thought was a game performance in the honeybee. Yeah, a, a very nice progression for uh, the daughter of Will, Ch Will Take Charge uh, and trained by Dallas Stewart, a nice maiden special weight win at the fairgrounds, and then the Mar Martha Washington stakes at Oaklawn, which it was a kind of a prep for the honeybee. 
and, and uh, she looked really good. She pressed the pace uh, uh, in the early going and then uh, coming around the turn into the stretch, just took charge of the race and, and looked really good. And if this filly uh, keeps progressing as she faces tougher competition, um, uh, I like this one. Yeah, I do too, Matt. And and I and I hinted maybe she didn't beat as strong Phillies as Beautiful Gift, but I actually do like the top two uh, that ran second and third behind her in this Honey Bee. I just think they're a little less proven so far than what Beautiful Gift beat out in the Santa Isabel. But I think people are going to look at this race and they're going to kind of poo-poo it, Matt, a little bit because she was out there uh, kind of uh, contesting the pace on a slow pace. But if you look at rider John Court. He was, he was holding her back early. It was just a race where no one wanted the lead. Will Secret is a filly that has rallied to win races uh, previously. So the fact that she was always pressured by other horses, even though it was a slower pace, and then was pressured down the lane by a couple of fillies, I think have some talent. I think that's impressive because I think next time out, when there's a normal pace, she'll go right back to rallying. And that makes Will Secret a very interesting, improving filly for me. Another interesting Philly Matt is Malathod, who's dropped to number five on our list because we just haven't seen her in a while. But the undefeated daughter of Curlin, trained by Todd Pletcher, sure looked good last year. Yeah, that's for sure. And like a number of horses uh, uh, that we've already mentioned in this top ten, uh, these are fillies that are talented, but but they are uh, really, really uh, strongly bred. And, and as you mentioned, Malathod is a Curlin out of the uh, the grade one winning uh, mare, Dreaming of Julia, those those wonderful Stone Street blood, blood lines. And this one sold for over a million dollars. And and last year, you know, didn't do anything wrong. Maiden special weight win at Belmont, then a win in the Tempted, and ending the year with a victory in the Demoiselle, a grade two at Aqueduct. And in that Kentucky Oaks future pool, um, she closed at seven to one. Yeah, she is well respected, Matt. And and one of the things I'm thinking as we're doing this Kentucky Oaks rankings is that Curlin had some pretty uh, pretty nice dates in the shed barn recently, and uh, because uh, yeah, th this is dreaming of Julia. And I failed to mention uh, that Clarier, number one on our list, is Curlin and Cavorty. Cavorty, of course, was a multiple grade one winner. Malathot romped in the tempted, but in the uh, in the wet track in the Demoiselle, she uh, looked like she was spinning her wheels a little bit, and she still kicked it in late to win that. So we're waiting patiently for her return, as we're waiting for the return of the Tim Ham trained filly, Matt, day out of the office, because day out of the office was arguably the most consistent two year filly in the country last year, uh, winning her first uh, three races, which included the Schuylerville and the Frisette easily on the lead. And then she ran a very good Breeders' Cup Juvenile, succumbing only to Viquis down the lane. Yeah, Brian, this is a horse that I was really high on uh, last year for uh, all those uh, performances that you mentioned already. Uh, um, and and those a lot of those races were uh, knocking heads with uh, with Viquist, who you mentioned, uh, Day Out of the Office was second to Viquist in the Breeders' Cup, but earlier on, Day Out of the Office got the best of, of Viquist. Um, a little concerned at this point, you know, uh, she's been in training. She had a little bit of a gap in her workouts um, uh, in February. So I, you know, and, and recently pa uh, posted another uh, another breeze. So I don't know if we, uh, uh, if she's going to make it into the Oaks, but uh, came up at 22 to one uh, odds in the future pool. Yeah, yeah, it, Matt, it's getting late early if we're looking at the Kentucky Oaks, but because we're literally seven weeks out now. So day out of the office, Malathot, uh, behind the eight ball a little bit, having raced this year, uh, they'll need to uh, get in at least one good prep before that Kentucky Oaks. Hey, Matt, where's the champ? Where's the champ? Where's the champ? Finally, we hit number seven and Vquist, the daughter of Nyquist, was the deserving Eclipse Award, Eclipse Award winner. She couldn't catch dead of the office in the one turn for Zet, but she sure did in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly last year at Keeneland. But her return race, Matt, for trainer Butch Reed in the Devona Dale was not what anyone was looking for. 
No, Brian, and you and I on the show, you know, often try and emphasize that when a horse comes back, uh, uh, it isn't important that they necessarily win the race, that it's just a stepping stone with the uh, oaks as the goal, but I don't know, Brian, I don't think trainer Butch Reed was expecting a ninth place finish uh, for Devona Dale. Uh, in the Devona Dale for uh, Vequist, um, particularly when she was sitting in a nice spot in contention uh, early on in the race, but then just came up completely empty um, as they went into the into the turn and heading for home. So there has to be some concern about Vequist now. Sure. And she was, of course, uh, up in everybody's top two or three uh, before that race. And yeah, between horses, she was she was contesting the lead, looked like she had a shot on the turn, but she was also kind of squeezed in between horses. Maybe she was just very uncomfortable, but it was a poor effort, one that she'll need to rebound on. And, and, and horses sometimes don't come back year to year. And, and more often than not, it's the good fillies that struggle. Uh, after after time off so we'll have to see what Bequist does next time out she fell to number seven on our list number eight Matt is an undefeated uh, daughter of uh, Street Sense for trainer Todd Pletcher that's Zajel and Zajel is two for two Matt stakes winner but she's only run seven furlongs yes well only run seven furlongs but again it's a Shadwell homebred and, and that means you know uh, uh uh, really good breeding, a daughter of street sense, um, and, and typically starting the year with a prep in a seven furlong race is not a bad thing. And, and that's what Zagel did in the forward gal at Gulfstream Park. She did. Uh, she's had two wins at seven furlongs down, down south. And the last one in the forward gal, uh, whole, whole, body, whole body Meister came out of that race with a big performance afterwards. So that's something to think about as we look for Zajel to stretch out uh, in anticipation of the Kentucky Oaks. And there in number nine is Hall Bodie Meister, man. She wasn't on anybody's list before the Devona Dale, but the daughter of, of course, Bodie Meister, trained by Juan Avia of, uh, of uh, who, who did he have last year, Matt? I think it was King Guillermo, right? Uh, Juan Avia has Hall Bodie Meister just turned in a huge performance in winning that Devona Dale at big odds big odds Brian 50 to one um and uh like you said uh had finished second to Zagel in the race before um sat a nice uh uh trip a night pressing the pace and when it came time to turn for home and, and kick it in wow but the whole Bodie Meister did just that and drew off to a really really big visually impressive victory yeah, and it was about this time last year where Swiss Skydiver came uh, came roaring uh, up the, into contention as one of the best rural affiliates in the country. And whole Bodie Meister may have announced herself after not looking like a real grade one filly her first six races, but that win in the Devona Dale speed and then just kicking it in down the lane to six and a half length victory was big. Number 10 on the list, Matt, is Pauline's Pearl. And here's a filly that was beaten by Will Secret, but the daughter of Tappet, out of uh, a grade, uh, graded stakes winner, Hot Dixie Chick. So she's bred regally and royally as well. Uh, ran a pretty darn good race in the honeybee because she was kind of in between horses behind a slow pace. She made a nice move. Will Secret had something left for her late, but Pauline's Pearl is really improving. Yeah, and this is another one of these horses with those wonderful Stone Street uh, bloodlines that we have talked about before. And, and Steve Asmussen has done some pretty good things with uh, Stone Street uh, fillies in the past. She won uh, Spin Away uh, last year. So um, this one, I look forward to taking a big step forward after that second place in the Honeybee. Yeah, don't sleep on those honeybee fillies, uh, folks. They're pretty good. Anyway, that's our top 10 for the Kentucky Oaks as we stand seven weeks out. I hope you enjoyed it. Matt and I enjoyed putting it together. We're going to jump right into the big million-dollar race at Oaklawn Park, Matt. It's a great card Saturday at Oaklawn Park, folks. That includes the return of the champion Whitmore on the other card, Matt. I think he's going for his 13th straight win in the Hot Springs Stakes. No, that can't be right, but something <laughs> like that, folks. Anyway, the Rebel, million dollars, grade two, mile and 16th, Matt. I think we have a bit of a showdown. Caddo River concert tour, head the list, but it's a good field. Let's start with Caddo River. 
the son of Hardspawn for trainer Brad Cox has looked pretty good in his last two races. Uh, yeah, Brian, uh, uh, if you add together uh, the uh, margins that Cata River has won those last two rivers, the last two races at, I think you're at close to 20 lengths, uh, uh, 10 length victory in the Smarty Jones uh, um, and a nine and a half length victory in that maiden special weight at Churchill Downs. Um, he's just impressed up me and I think impressed us with uh, uh, his cruising speed. He's got one of those easy going fluid strides and uh, he uses it to uh, move along at some uh, a pretty swift clip. Yeah, Matt, and you know this is a horse who I had very high in my derby list before he made his stakes debut. That 10-length win in the Smarty Jones, of course, did nothing to dissuade my, my liking of Cattle River. I like him in here. He's my pick in the Rebel as he'll vie for favoritism with the Bob Baffert train concert tour. But I think Cattle River's for real. We just got to find out if he's a mile and a quarter horse or not. We'll get some clues in here because there's some speed in this mile 16th Rebel and uh, uh, he'll have some work, but I, I think he can utilize his speed again, breaking from the rail. Concert Tour is one of the horses who wants to lay close to Cattle River early. Another, another son of Street Sense, Matt. This one's trained by Bob Baffert. He's two for two. Two for two. Yep, that's for sure. And in the last, uh, in his last race, he took that seven furlong uh, prep race method that we talked about in the San Vicente grade two out at Santa Anita, where uh, coming down to the wire, he battled against his uh, stable mate, Freedom Fighter, to get up for the win. And, and, and after that race, Freedom Fighter, of course, headed out to, uh, headed across the country to New York um, to race in the Gotham and wasn't able to get the win in there. So um, a close finish against Freedom Fighter um, uh, is, something to think about heading into the Rebel. Yeah, Concert Tour uh, didn't run it too. So he's had two races this year, both sprints. We were talking about the San Vicente where he really had to kick it in late. And he did kick it in late to go by Freedom Fighter, win by a half a length. If you look at it on paper, I certainly think Cato River should be the favorite on Saturday, but you got the Bob Baffert factor. So that's why I think there's a question mark as to who will go off favorite. Uh, yeah, you, you said it nicely, because I didn't think Freedom Fighter ran a very good race in the Gotham. He was fourth there, so it was kind of a so-so performance. That might be a little bit of neg negative check mark on Concert Tour, but on the other hand, he's bred to run a distance. He won two races sprinting, third time out, much like life is good, you would expect him to move forward. He's certainly the top threat in here to Cato River, my top pick. Uh, another horse that, that we keep... You know, people don't talk about him. I liked him as a long shot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but keep me in mind, uh, trained by Diodoro, he hasn't raced since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt, but he was second in the Breeders' Futurity, grade one, rallying third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile behind Essential Quality for the second straight time behind Essential Quality. And then he came back to win the Kentucky Jockey Club. What's wrong with keep me in mind? I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, the horse, and particularly because you have to keep in mind uh, um, his late start to 2021 in the Rebel is not because of any uh, uh, health problem or physical problem or train, you know, training problem with, uh, uh, with keep me in mind. It, it was a matter of circumstances. Diodoro made a decision um, earlier in the, in the winter to not race at uh, fairgrounds and to go and run Keep Me In Mind at Oakland Park, which is the home base of uh, Robertino Diodoro, the trainer. And as it turned out, then that weather, uh, freak weather uh, that hit Arkansas caused, uh, uh, caused the delay. But here we are with Keep Me In Mind, and he's got to make his debut against a, what can only be described as a very, very tough field. It should be a tough field for a million dollars, right? I don't like keep me in mind in the wind spot here, folks. I just don't. He's been away for a while. I've always liked this horse, but he's been away for a while and he's facing horses who are really probably uh, getting into top form now. He shouldn't be after, after a delay of a while and he really doesn't have any speed at all. So I think it's one of those races where 
hey, if he makes his move, he rallies nicely for second and third, and he's really running down the stretch. We start talking about him more and more as a serious threat at a mile and a quarter on the first Saturday in May. In here, I think that's probably the best case scenario is the third choice to rally nicely and get a piece of the purse because I just don't see him being at the top of his game yet to beat horses like Cattle River and Concert Tour on Saturday. Another one who's been away mad is get her number, get her number, son of Dialed In, a cleverly named horse by Dialed In. He's trained by Peter Miller, started his career with two turf races, and then he won the great one American Pharaoh in his dirt debut. We haven't seen him since, though. Yeah, that is, and that is noteworthy, but it has been a long time, and this is a tough field to come off a layoff, and this is a horse who has got some speed and 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 may have to tangle with Caddo River, but like you said, uh, 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 interesting past performances, and obviously some quality in here, and you know, you and uh, overriding, you have to keep in mind that uh, historically Baffert, you know. Baffert loves winning this rebel and why not with the, with the big purse that always comes along uh, with this race. And he has had a tendency in the past to send his very best three-year-old or three-year-olds to run in the rebel. And this year it's concert tour. This year it's concert tour. Get her number, Matt. I, 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 I'm going to hold off on get her number here as far as betting him. I just think, uh, you know, almost six months away, I wasn't completely I uh, sold on him as a two-year-old, but his form is good. Tactical speed, a fresh horse. He should show some speed in here. I don't see him beating this field as well. And I, I'm going to say the same about Superstock, who looks like the fifth choice to me. Another son of Dialed In, trained by Steve Asmussen. He, uh, he broke his maiden in a stakes race at Lone Star, a Texas stakes race, Matt. And then he came up to Kentucky, ran three good races. But uh, third, third, and second, he couldn't break through. I think this one's only tougher. Yeah, Brian. And, you know, uh, uh, there's Big Lake in the in the field also for Asmussen, who's got two nice wins at uh, fairgrounds. I, I think what we're pointing out here is that this is a this is a pretty nice field. Um, but for me, um, uh, sorry, fans, for some of you, uh, um, you'll be uh, grumbling a little bit. But I, too, am going with Caddo River um, because I his 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 two victories have been so impressive Cata River and Concert Tour. Yeah, uh, I, I do think there's some interesting horses in here. Big Lake has won his last two, the son of American Pharaoh, like you said, Matt. Also Hozier, who, who uh, after a so-so debut for Bob Baffert, uh, the son of Pioneer of the Nile, looked good winning, stretching out in his second start. I think he's a horse to look out for in the future. So I think there's a lot of horses in here who might be a race away. Hozier, Big Lake, get her number, keep me in mind, especially. Um, and even Superstock, you could say the same thing. That's tough when you've got the kind of recent form of Cattle River and Concert Tour. I hate to do it as well, Matt, but I, I'm, I'm on the top three uh, pretty much. If Cattle River is the favorite, like I think he might still be over the Baffert. I kind of like them in order, Cattle River over Concert Tour and keep me in mind in the Rebel, but a very interesting race. I think it could be one of the key preps in this year's Kentucky Derby, Matt. I was talking about a champion returning in Whitmore. Hey, what about Swiss Skydiver, Matt? She, uh, she earned quite a following last year with her five nice stakes wins. She, ran, she danced every dance. She ran all over the country. She faced the boys more than once. She returns a first time since a disappointing uh, seventh place finish in the Breeders' Cup Distaff where she got off to a bad start. And of course, couldn't really run with Monomoy Girl down the stretch, but uh, that was a that was a bad luck race. She had a great year, the daughter of Daredevil for Kenny McPeak. We're excited to see her back in the Grade One Beholder Mile Saturday at Santa Anita. Certainly excited to see the three-year-old champ come back, and it's interesting that uh, trainer Kenny McPeak sends her out to Santa Anita. Uh, that shouldn't be a big deal, considering that. Um, uh, Swiss Skydiver had a great victory at Santa Anita last year in the Santa Anita Oaks. So she's going out to a, a, a track and a racing surface that um, uh, McPeak knows that she likes. Yeah, yeah. The Santa Anita Oaks was a big performance, as were so many of her races last year. And of course, including winning the Preakness over the male champion, Authentic. She's a nice filly. Santa Anita, I think fresh won't be a problem. Will she come back uh, as good or even better as a four-year-old's the question? We'll find out more in the Beholder Mile because it's a sneaky little Beholder Mile, Matt. 
because there are some very interesting horses in here. Uh, Sainis from Chile won the, uh, uh, the La Cañada last time by open lengths. Uh, so she's getting better uh, uh, coming from Chile after about four races in America. But as time goes by and Harvest Moon are two California uh, four-year-olds that look to be really getting good. Harvest Moon we know a little more about because she won a couple of stakes races last year before running a very good race in the Breeders' Cup Distaff. But as time goes by for trainer Bob Baffert, the daughter of American Pharaoh has really looked good in her last two. Yeah, uh, it's got a win um, in an allowance race by uh, nine lengths, um, has been an odds-on favorite uh, in all four uh, of her races, which isn't unusual for, for Bob Baffert horses, particularly a daughter of American Pharaoh. So uh, like you said, there she's one of, you know, three or four really talented fillies that uh, Swiss Skydiver uh, is is going to have to deal with. Yeah, as time goes by, could be any uh, any kind. I think this might be a tough spot facing the speed of Swiss Skydiver. Harvest Moon, I think, is more proven, and she literally could be one of the best older mares in the country, trained by Simon Callahan for uh, the daughter of Uncle Mo. So uh, not an easy spot for Swiss Skydiver, Matt. I don't know about you, but I'm not betting this race. I'm going to watch this race and root Swiss Skydiver home. But folks, what we're saying is, it's not a uh, one, two, three, easy peasy unless she runs like she really could in here because there's some there's some talent. Yeah, and e and even with uh, as time goes by in there and the others, uh, um, you know, as time goes by, who's gotten so heavily bet, uh, uh, Swiss Skydiver deserves to be a heavy favorite in this race, but you know, first time off a layoff and. Uh, 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 a quality field. I feel the same way about the race, Brian. I'm not. I, I'm not going to try and beat Swiss Skydiver because she could very well just, you know, run right past these horses. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a new year, and this is the kind of race where I'm excited to see the champ come back, and I'm going to enjoy watching the race. But I'll save my money for the Rebel. Well said, my friend. Uh, we did a lot today. We did Life is Good. We're talking about him, a huge win, but also a huge bear out in the stretch, winning the uh, San Felipe. Our Kentucky Oaks top 10 was fun, Matt. We looked at the Rebel. Unfortunately, we're on the favorites there, and we look forward to returns of both Whitmore in that, in that hot spring stakes, which also has a good, tough field, and Swiss Skydiver, of course, in the grade one beholder mile. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. I hope fans, you'll enjoy the new look Horse Center as we welcome our new producer, Tony Bonabing, on board. Gotta love Tony Bonabing. Thanks to Tony. Thanks to Candace Curtis for those HRN graphics as well. And thanks for all you watching each week. I want to thank our sponsor as well, Matt. That's Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Folks, next week we'll be back talking about Louisiana Derby Day. Louisiana Derby, uh, the Fairgrounds Oaks, and we'll have a brand new Kentucky Derby top 10 next week right here. We'll see you then on Horse Center.